Hi everyone, I'm Matt from Look Into Bitcoin. And today we're going to be looking at will we ever run out of Bitcoin? To do this, we'll be using a number of resources that are all freely available on lookintobitcoin.com, your number one source for Bitcoin information. And if you haven't already, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on notifications to ensure you're receiving all of our content as soon as it's released. So right now I'm just on the Bitcoin live price page here on Look Into Bitcoin. As we can see, the current circulating supply of Bitcoin is around 19.4 million, which is fairly substantial amount of Bitcoin, especially if you're just trying to accumulate some sats here and there. 19.4 million might seem an extortionate amount, but really it's not too much when we look at a few different factors. We also need to keep in mind that there is a hard cap of Bitcoin, so there will never be more circulating Bitcoin than 21 million. So we're actually over 92% of the way there when it comes to actually mining all the new Bitcoin. So with less than 8% of supply less, let's look at a few different reasons why we may actually be running out of Bitcoin. So first of all, I'm just going to go to this Investopedia article here, which lays out pretty nicely some of the calculations and topics we'll be covering in this video. Ultimately, it's just outlined the facts that after each halving event, about every four years, as the inflationary rate of Bitcoin is cut in half, as it currently sits at about 6.25, but in under a year's time, this will decrease by 50% to 3.125, and this will continue to be cut in half about every four years from the next halving. And what we can say is as this inflationary rate is cutting half and continues to be going in half, the number of new Bitcoin entering the space drops significantly. And after a certain period of time, after the amount of halving events continues to decrease the inflationary rate and rewards for Bitcoin miners, eventually we'll get down to the amount of new Bitcoin being earned by the miners per block at one Satoshi. So this is the lowest denomination, it is 100 millionth of a Bitcoin, so an incredibly small amount. But when will we actually reach this limit of 21 million? When will the miner rewards be cut to zero? When will we run out of fresh Bitcoin entering the network? Well, this will actually occur in about 2140. So about 120 years from now. So we certainly have some time to continue accumulating before we really do run out of new Bitcoin entering the space. But you have to keep in mind, like we said, over 92% of the Bitcoin that will ever be in circulation are currently in circulation. So while it may sound like a long time, 120 years to continue accumulating, this amount of new Bitcoin is being cut so significantly that really for the last 50 to 100 years, the amount of new Bitcoin entering the space will really be quite negligible. A lot of minor earnings will be relied entirely on fees. As we can see, the Bitcoin hash rate, the amount of computational power that miners are actually putting into the network continues to increase exponentially. You might actually think that as the block rewards are going to be cut in half, that potentially we're going to see Bitcoin miners not so interested in investing in new equipment and mining as much Bitcoin as possible. But even though we're seeing the block rewards in terms of Bitcoin denominations being cut in half every four years, like we saw before, the hash rate continues to climb exponentially. Now they're betting on the fact that the Bitcoin price will continue to increase as it has done historically. So even though the reward will be cut in half, if the Bitcoin price rises, the USD earnings or fiat earnings will hopefully still continue to rise, especially when we keep into account that the minor revenue in fees should hopefully continue to increase again in line with the Bitcoin price Another Investopedia article here is also claiming that about 20% of all Bitcoin is lost, unrecoverable. So I'm not sure exactly the methodology that they came to this number, but we can say that there are a, a very large amount of known Bitcoins that are lost and will never be in circulation again, such as the original Satoshi wallets, which contain millions of Bitcoin, which is a huge, significant portion. And there's of course also these stories you hear of people that lost hundreds of millions of dollars on Bitcoin in an old laptop that they lost in a dump somewhere. But what we can really look at is something a bit more tangible, like the HODL wave. Because of course we can speculate to say maybe three, four, five million Bitcoin are lost and will never be found again. But really it's hard to really quantify that. What we can do is look at something like the one year HODL wave, which is looking at the amount of Bitcoin that hasn't moved in at least a one year period. And we can see this has continued to reach new all time highs after every cycle. So after the 2015-2016 bull cycle into bear cycle, we could see this peaked at just over 60%. And then following the 2017 bull cycle, this peaked once again, just before the next bull cycle in 2020, when it was just again, 62-63%. But in the most recent bear cycle, we've seen this increase exponentially, and it hasn't really showed any signs of slowing down. We can even draw a line here to say that 
we're maybe actually hitting a point of resistance or have actually broken out of this trend of slightly increasing peaks of the one year huddle wave and maybe we're going to actually see this increase exponentially. What we can also do is line up the bottoms we've had as this is a fairly predictable metric actually. So we could see maybe after the next cycle once this begins to decrease again once maybe people start taking some profit in the later stage of the bull cycle that maybe this won't drop beneath 60% again. So as we approach a 70% figure and say that we maybe even want dip beneath 60% again if we just round up this figure to 70% and say that maybe only 30% of Bitcoin is moved quite routinely every year, then again, this drops the amount of circulating Bitcoin, the amount of liquid Bitcoin that is actually being traded and invested quite substantially. If you take into account there's about 19.4 million Bitcoin in circulation, about 70% of them haven't even moved in about a year. This takes the amount of circulating Bitcoin down to under 6 million, which is actually quite a small amount of Bitcoin when you take into account certain aspects like the amount of millionaires in the world. Now, of course, a lot of millionaires will already have some exposure to Bitcoin. But when you take into account that there are 62 and a half million millionaires globally, this allows every millionaire in the world to only earn about a third of one Bitcoin, which again, this isn't taking into account the amount of Bitcoin that are lost, the amount of Bitcoin that are liquid and people aren't willing to sell and the amount of Bitcoin that hasn't been mined yet. So this is, again, really pointing towards the fact that as soon as there is this large increase in demand, potentially in the next bull cycle, where we have a huge rush from not only millionaires, but publicly traded companies and even countries that are trying to accumulate as much Bitcoin as possible, companies like MicroStrategy, and even countries like El Salvador that continue to try and accumulate as much Bitcoin as they can foresee the supply and demand shock we're likely going to have in the near future. It really does indicate that at some point we are going to run out of Bitcoin and the amount of Bitcoin that's being traded will be so small that it's likely going to increase the price exponentially as the amount of demand doesn't really decrease but the amount of supply is decreasing substantially. So just to summarize, the supply of inactive Bitcoin continues to grow with the supply laying dormant for at least one year climbing to almost 70% of all circulating Bitcoin. And of 92% of all Bitcoin that will ever exist are already in circulation, with the remainder being mined slower and slower over the next 120 years. And as demand continues to grow on both retail, minor, institutional and a global scale, simple supply and demand economics will come into effect and will likely see a huge supply shock and an exponential rise in the Bitcoin price. If you like this video, then please visit lookintobitcoin.com where you can also consider becoming a site subscriber to gain access to live charts in-depth newsletters, indicator alerts, private trading view scripts, and more of a fraction of the standard industry price. And let me know in the comments down below, are you stacking stats? Do you think that we are going to have a supply shock in the Bitcoin network as everyone scrambles to try and pick up as much as they can with a diminishing new supply incoming into the network? Let me know in the comments down below and on social media. I look forward to reading and replying to all of them. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.